everybody, I'm Hibiscus Moon and I teach about crystal energy and I like to back it up with science so you can have confidence and effectiveness in your crystal work. We're going to discuss today precisely how crystals work from a physics point of view and what makes them so special. So I have a question of the day. If you can slap that like button, if you care about how crystals work because not necessarily does everybody really care about how they work some are like i don't care i just know they work i don't need to know the how but if you do care about the how then go ahead and hit that like button because i think a lot of you who are attracted to my work like to know that's like the thing that really gets you excited so go ahead and hit that like button if that's you also, don't forget to click on the link in the description box below. That's going to take you to my companion blog post. That's where I usually put anything that I re reference in the video, like related links, resources, photos, and all that kind of stuff. So crystals have vibrations, just like everything else does. So what makes them so special? So it's important to keep in mind that our entire physical universe is made up of pure energy and vibration. Einstein determined that energy and matter are actually the same thing. You're all familiar with, I'm sure, that equation that E equals mc squared that Einstein gave us. That means that energy equals matter and vice versa. Matter equals energy. So that's all it means. Yes, the light is multiplied by the speed of light in that equation, but don't get too hung up on that part. It's just a little mathematical trick and it makes the whole equation work. So it is important, but the main thing that I'm trying to get across it here is energy equals matter and vice versa. So everything is made up of that pure energy, right? And vibration. So I have a poster here that I want to show you just to, it kind of, um, just goes over the electromagnetic spectrum and these are all the wavelengths we can measure that we know of but i can almost guarantee you there are other wavelengths out there both lower frequency than radio waves and higher frequency than gamma rays we just don't have the ability to measure them all right the empirical evidence that scientists love so much um, we don't have that yet but we might and then we have the visible light spectrum right here. So they've blown that up for us so you can see it. This is not to scale, by the way. The visible light spectrum, as teeny tiny as it is there, is, it doesn't even take up that much space on the electromagnetic spectrum. So here we can see that everything does have a vibration. As we go higher up on the EM spectrum into gamma rays, you have the highest vibration or actually the highest frequency. How frequently a wave comes by per second, we measure that in hertz. So the highest frequency we know of is gamma rays and then visible light is right about here. Radio waves, lowest frequency. We do know of like sound waves or like way down there, all right? But you can see that it's lower frequency or it comes by less frequently per second. So I just wanted to give you a, a visual for vibrations and frequency and what we're talking about. But the vibrations from crystals are very different. So matter vibrates at these different vibrational frequencies as I just showed you. Not just our crystals, all matter. My chair, my desk, you, me, the light. They all have this average resonant frequency. Think of the that up and down wave that I just showed you, all right? So they have a frequency of vibration and we measure it, as I said, in hertz, how frequently that wave comes by per second. So we all have this average resonant frequency. I term this the dominant oscillatory rate. You might hear people call it a base resonant frequency for ease of communication. So I'm just going to call it the DOR. That makes it easier for me to keep saying it if I have to say it again and again. This sounds totally woo-woo, but it's straight up physics here, all right? This part of what I'm going to tell you. So we, as humans, are a collection of DORs. We're not made up of one dominant oscillatory rate, but a collection. So our heart has one DOR, our kidneys have a different DOR, our eyes have a different DOR, our brain has a different DOR, each of our different thought waves have different DOR. You probably heard of alpha, beta, theta, brain waves, right? Each organ, your heart, your brain, your liver, all the various cells have a DOR. The DNA has a DOR right down to the chromosomes and beyond, all right? Sub 
particles in your DNA. So all collectively, we have this average vibrational frequency made up of a collection of varying DORs and it's not very stable at all. In fact, it's quite easily influenced by all sorts of things in our environment, including statements, thoughts, definitely by our emotions. Emotions are simply chemical signals. They're, they're the result of chemical signals in our body and they're simply energy. Actually, since we're all connected to and influenced by everything in our environment, including crystals and stones, our unstable vibrational nature makes it so that absolutely anything can interact with our energy field and leave its mark on us. So our frequency can get really out of whack when we experience any type of high amplitude energy. High amplitude means high energy, very strong energy. Something like stress would definitely make us get out of whack. All right. It's because we don't have this very stable structure, and I'll get to more of that in a little bit, that we are so easily influenced and unstable in keep maintaining that DOR. So a crystal, in contrast, has one DOR. It's not a collection of all different ones like we are. It's not made of varying organs and things. It has one DOR, and it does depend on several variables. The different frequencies that crystals have depend on different things. For instance, the crystal spe specific molecular structure, its molecular composition, and what elements make up that crystal, its size, if it's a smaller one or a bigger one, um, its thickness, the thickness or size of a crystal will affect the DOR. So for instance, this crystal, this quartz crystal, okay, it's clear quartz, as is this, all right, this one's not quite as clear, but it's clear on the top, and this one's very, this is like water clear, all right, but they're the same crystal, but different sizes and thicknesses, obviously. So this size quartz compared to this size will have a different DOR due to that difference in size, okay? All right, next, it's specific color. It's color, very, very important because the visible color that we see is just specific light frequencies, like I showed you on that poster. And people have a hard time understanding this, but if I'm looking at an amethyst crystal and I see that violet purple light, okay, that's a very specific vibrational frequency, a very specific light frequency on the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so we see that violet is right next to ultraviolet and it's right here, very specific frequency on the electromagnetic spectrum. And you can see that different colors, it, we blow up the visible light spectrum here, violet is a higher frequency than red. Red is a lower frequency, all right? So very specific light frequencies have uh, different hertz on the electromagnetic spectrum. So violet is that higher frequency than red. Red has a longer wavelength, as you just saw. Very specific energy that's emanating from that crystal due to its light, it's specific light frequency. Okay, so what I'm trying to get across to you here is there are many different variables that affect the dominant oscillatory rate of that crystal. All right, so if you like this stuff, by the way, go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter, um, hibiscusmoongift.com, because I send out all kinds of wonderful tidbits, lots of little gifts, and if you like this sort of talk, then you're gonna to wanna to subscribe to my newsletter. Plus you get a little gift when you subscribe there, hibiscusmoongift.com. All right, so a crystal also has a very precise, fixed, repeating molecular pattern in how its molecules are arranged. That's what makes a crystal a crystal. Unlike us, it's geometrically perfect. All right, so this is a model, my model of a sodium chloride molecule, also known as halite or table salt. All right, and you can see that in a crystal, always the molecules are geometrically arranged. Sodium chloride happens to be a cubic crystal system, so it sets its molecules up in a perfect cube like this. Okay, so what actually makes a crystal a crystal is that its molecules, if you're able to zoom in, with a scanning electron microscope or look at a model like this, a uh, scanning electron microscope is the kind that can see the molecules really, really, really small. They're arranged in this fixed, regularly repeating geometric pattern. You can see that. 
So it's geometric. It's got a very regular repeating format. So it's not random at all. It's the exact opposite of random. Although we have some liquid crystals in us, we're not mostly crystalline or crystalline, however you prefer to say it. We're not geometrically perfect. We don't have that fixed repeating geometric molecular pattern. We're not crystals. Like I said, we do have some liquid crystals, some crystalline structures, but we also have quite a bit of randomness. We don't have this very precise pattern or precision to us as crystals do. So since crystals are so geometrically perfect, as I just showed you at the molecular level, they have the lowest possible state of disorganization with their energy. Because see, most things in our immediate universe tend towards disorganization. Remember, a crystal has one fixed geometric molecular pattern. Because of that, they have the lowest state of what we call entropy. This word entropy, what does it mean? It's just, it means the tendency to go towards disorder. If they weren't coming and mowing the lawn here every week, right, what would happen to my lawn? I'm in South Florida. The, the rain, the grass would get crazy. The weeds, we would be absolutely overrun by them. If they weren't putting work into the system of the lawn, my husband going out there weed eating and doing something, it would tend towards disorder. It would go straight towards chaos, disorder, really fast. That's the opposite of, of uh, what we call syntropy. So that's entropy taking place, disorder, chaos. After a few months, like I said, we'd be overrun by vines and bushes. Things tend to rust, right? If we talk about other things, a bicycle left out in the rain tends towards disorder if you don't put work into the system to keep it maintained and organized. When you put work into a system, entropy is not going to take over. So you get the opposite. You get syntropy, which is organization, coherence. All right, so what does this have to do with crystals? Since the crystals are so geometrically perfect, crystals have a very low state of entropy. They actually resist, they naturally resist disorder. They have this low state of disorganization and they easily maintain their stability, unlike us, all right? Here again, we're very unstable. So all these different things play into the stability, the DOR, the vibrational frequency of that crystal. Okay, I feel like this was a lot for one video, so I'm gonna have a part two. We're gonna cover how are the healing properties of a crystal determined, why are we influenced by the energy of crystals, why does that even happen, and what about programming a crystal? How does that come into play with all of this? All right, so remember to click on the link in the description box. That's gonna take you to the companion blog post I have for this, where I have all the like, related links and resources for you. While you're there, you can sign up for my newsletter if you want to, hibiscusmoongift.com. Um, if you like this kind of information, you're gonna to wanna to do that. And if you like this video, if you felt it was of value to you, please like, comment, and share this video out. That is really helpful. Also, subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. If you're not sure, go ahead and try and subscribe and see what happens. Click the bell so you get notified whenever I do a video. And with that, as always, crystal blessings, namaste, and I'll see you in part two.